Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to cover our histology unit diagrams. So that means we are going to cover the four types of tissues uh, and the diagrams or the, I guess, subcategories of each type of tissue. Um, just a reminder that you're responsible for not only the anatomical labels, but any physiology notes that are made as well. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first diagram here, we're looking at simple squamous epithelium. Couple things here. Anytime we're talking about tissues and it's referred to as simple, it's because simple means that it's made of one layer. Okay, so uh, squamous are kind of like squished. It's one way to think about it. Um, they're very um, good for diffusion because they're thin. So simple squamous is saying like one layer of squished cells. Um, Below that, we have one layer of cubed cells. So these are going to be simple, cuboidal, because they're cube-shaped, epithelium. And if we go one further, instead of just the cube shape, we have these column-shaped cells, which are going to be simple columnar. epithelium. So these are the three types of simple epithelium. Well, that's a lie. There's actually one more, um, but this is actually a little more complex. We refer to this as pseudo-stratified ciliated because it has cilia at the top columnar because they're columns epithelium now let's break this down because I know this one's really busy um, pseudo stratified doesn't always have to be ciliated but here we have this layer of cilia um, as shown by label D. Okay, so cilia are like finger-like projections. And here all these cells joined together make a membrane that we refer to as the cell membrane. <clears throat> and course for each cell we have to have a nucleus so more than one is nuclei and finally they all all these cells attach to what we call the basement membrane now it kind of looks like there's lots of layers here however if you follow along Say we follow this cell, this cell stretches the full length of the tissue. Okay, because of that, it may look like there's layers, which stratified is a term meaning layers but it's actually only one layer, which makes it simple. So um, because it looks like it's layered, but it's not, it's called pseudo stratified. Pseudo is a prefix meaning false. So this whole name of H means false layered ciliated columnar epithelium. So really it's just like this, but it 
looks as if it um, was stratified. All right, let's move on to our stratified, our truly stratified epithelia. We have our stratified squamous. Okay, so our, our layered squished cells. Oops, just deleted what I was writing. Just a reminder, stratified equals layered. <clears throat> and then we also have what's called a transitional. epithelium. Okay. Now this can mean two things. Transitional can mean that it physically changes. So for example, if you look um, at the reading here, it talks about how the bladder um, stretches um, when it's full and is relaxed when it's empty. Um, that is a transition or a change. However, transitional can also represent an area where one um, type of epithelium is transitioning into another. So we're going to have a little bit of um, multiple tissue type characteristics in the same area because we're transitioning from one tissue to the next. Okay. Um, additionally, with this epithelium, I want to talk about some of the types of glands, okay? The first gland that we have is called an exocrine gland. What this means is that when uh, the cells here are releasing their secretions, the secretions are actually going into a duct or a tube. Uh, this isn't always the case. Um, there's not always a duct available for these secretions to go into. If that's the case, we have an endocrine gland. So an endocrine gland, um, we still have these secretions. However, instead of secreting into a duct or a tubule, we're secreting into the spaces that are between the cells. Um, while so far we've talked about glands that are made of multiple cells, there are instances um, where we have a one-celled gland, and that's what we call a goblet cell. So a goblet cell is a one-celled gland. Okay. Um, these are very common when it comes to secreting mucus. And then here at the bottom, we have three more types of cells. Um, we've got a miracrine gland. Okay. And miracrine glands are going to secrete um, using vesicles. Okay, so they're using um, vesicles to release their secretions. Um, similar to this, um, even though we're using vesicles, uh, an apocrine gland is actually going to lose part of the cell with the secretion. So if you look at the miracrine gland, you can see that only the vesicles, these black little dots, are leaving the cells. However, if you look at the apocrine gland, we've got these black dots, these vesicles, but then part of the cell is actually going with the secretion. This is actually what happens um, with lacteals or lactation glands. Um, and finally, we have our holocrine, excuse me, gland. 
And this is where the cell itself is going to rupture to release the secretions. Uh, this is common when it comes to oil glands. Um, so when it comes to uh, like the oils that are produced and released on your skin, uh, they are going to actually cause cell rupturing to release those oils. All right, that covers epithelium and glands. So let's go ahead and talk about connective tissues. Okay. So connective tissues, got, we have quite a few here. Our first one, we're looking at loose connective. And um, some of the pieces that make up loose connective are going to be similar to uh, some of the following types of connective tissue. The difference, though, is how the components of the tissue are arranged. Okay, so loose connective tissue, you can see there's quite a bit of space in between all these fibers. So this space here, like A, that I am just putting little stripes through, A is referred to as the matrix. You're going to hear the term matrix frequently throughout different types of tissues. It simply means background substance. Um, the reason it's highlighted here, though, is because there's a lot of matrix. There's a lot of space in between, and so that's why this tissue is considered to be loose. Um, I know it's not highlighted very well, but here we have what's called a fibrocyte. The suffix site means cell and fibro meaning fiber. So this is a fiber cell. And then we have our collagenous fibers or collagen. Collagen is a flexible protein. And then we also have elastic fibers. And this kind of crisscross pattern that's made between the collagen and elastic and the fibrocytes is what makes this loose connective tissue. Now, if we look at the next one, you can see this is arranged much more compact. Um, we have a lot of collagenous fibers here. Okay, those collagen fibers. And because of how tightly packed all these fibers are, this is referred to as dense connective tissue. Now, I just said that these are nice and compact and tight. However, sometimes our fibers can be packed very tightly, um, even though they're quite disorganized. And if that's the case, which you can see here, see how these are kind of changing direction all over the place, which are, again, our collagenous fibers. Although this is still dense, uh, it's not organized, so we refer to it as dense or regular connective tissue. Um, back in our loose connective. We had these elastic fibers. You see this? On our next page, we have a tissue that has a higher concentration of these elastic fibers here. Um, it's almost like a 50-50 ratio of these elastic to collagenous fibers. And 
And because of that, this is referred to as elastic connective tissue. Sorry, that was Buford. Okay. Um, we also have what's called reticular tissue. Um, this is more so in your internal organs. Um, things that are spongy like the liver. The liver is very spongy. Um, and so here we have our reticular fibers. that make up reticular connective tissue. And probably our most simple type of connective tissue is our adipose tissue. This is simply fat. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about cartilage. As I mentioned before, any background space, such as this area here, this is what we refer to as the matrix. And each of these cells is a cartilage cell. The um, root word for cartilage is chondro. And the word, uh, the suffix, excuse me, the suffix meaning cell is site. So these are chondrocytes. Chondrocyte, again, chondro meaning cartilage, site meaning cell. This here, having this um, kind of 50-50 matrix, matrix to chondrocyte ratio is what we refer to as hyaline cartilage. This is a very pliable cartilage, but it's still pretty thick. Um, this is what is going to cause the, um, like the thick bulb at the end of your nose. Um, it's also found um, at the ends of articulating bones, like in your joints. Below that, you'll see that we have a few um, chondrocytes, but we've got a lot of collagenous fibers. So we have a lot of collagen in this particular cartilage sample. Because of all of these fibers, this is referred to as fibrocartilage. And fibrocartilage is going to be found in a lot of high stress areas, things that are going to have gravitational forces, um, as well as in between bones. Um, so for example, um, your sternum uh, has connections between your ribs through cartilage, and this is going to be, um, you know, including fiber. Um, and so it's also found between, okay. Okay, so the next type of cartilage we've got, um, as you can see, fewer chondrocytes, um, so there's a lot less cartilage cells. However, we have a lot of these fibers in between, um, these collagenous fibers or collagen. And because of that, we refer to this as fibrocartilage. Now, fibrocartilage is going to be found in high-stress areas. 
um, areas that are subject to gravitational forces. So um, the cartilage between your vertebrae, between different bones, um, and also kind of like uh, between your ribs and your sternum where you have cartilage there as well. Um, and then finally, we have a cartilage at the bottom here that you can see is very rich in chondrocytes um, and uh, has fewer areas of matrix. But what's different is all these dark lines in between are elastic fibers. Because of all these elastic fibers, this type of cartilage is going to be very flexible. Um, and we refer to it as elastic cartilage. Again, it's very flexible. And because of its flexibility, you're going to find it um, in places like the cartilage of your ears. Um, and, and that's why it's so malleable. If we move to the next page, we can see the matrix here of a bone sample. And we also have an osteocyte. Osteo meaning the prefix bone, site being the suffix site. Um, and this is showing bone. Now when we get to the skeletal unit, we're going to do this diagram in much more detail. So just a heads up there. And then another type of, or I guess I should say our final type of connective tissue that we're going to talk about here is blood. Blood has four components. We'll talk more about this after the cardiovascular unit. Um, but we have our erythrocytes, which are our red blood cells, our platelets, Our platelets are going to be responsible for blood clotting. Uh, we have our plasma, which is mostly water-based. Um, so this is what makes your blood fluid. And then we have our leukocytes, which are our white blood cells, play a big role in our immune system. Last bit here, we have one page to combine our muscle and nervous tissue. Our first sample of muscular tissue being skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle, of course, being the voluntary version of muscle. Um, and it is multinucleated. We have many nuclei here, especially because we need to make sure we have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, um, no, I don't want that. With, let's see, what do I want to say? One of the characteristics of our skeletal muscle is going to be its striations. And striations are going to be the stripes of our muscle. So it's very obvious when you're looking at actual photographs of tissues. Um, when you have those striations, you're typically looking at skeletal muscle. Um, the other giveaway that you're looking at skeletal muscle is that it is multinucleated. So each cell will have multiple nuclei. And they are very large. Some cells 
will span the length of the entire muscle. So this whole thing is showing one cell. When it comes to cardiac muscle, it can look like it has striations, but it's not um, in the same sense as skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle has these stripes that are caused by what we call intercalated discs. Intercalated discs are going to be our connections um, between other cardiac cells. And because these cells need to carry a charge, um, because of course you need some type of, um, you need, what is the word I'm looking for? Because you need to be able to carry the depolarization of, or the electrical charge um, through the heart, you need to have these connectors in between the cells so that there's no disruption to the, to the flow of energy. Um, and then again, we're going to have our nuclei here. In our last muscle type, we have smooth muscle. And our smooth muscle is going to be involuntary, of course. Here we are single nucleated cells. And each cell, as you can see, it has this long structure here. So of course, it's very obvious that we've only got one nuclei. Okay. Our last connective tissue type, no. Okay. Our last tissue type is going to be nervous tissue. And our nervous tissue, here we're looking at mostly neurons. So this here, for example, is illustrating, supposed to be illustrating a neuron. Um, the actual body, or the nerve cell body, is called the soma. That's going to be a term that we're going to see more in the nervous unit. And leading to the soma, we have dendrites. Dendrites are going to be the extensions of our neurons that receive electrical impulses. So these are the receiving end of the neuron, whereas the end that sends out impulses is going to be our axon. Okay. And then you'll see we also have these surrounding cells. Anytime we have a supporting cell in the nervous system, it's referred to as a glial cell or neuroglia. And we're going to talk more about that in the nervous system. Okay. And finally, each soma is going to have one nucleus. Okay. And so that covers our histology diagrams.